44 million people carry student loan debt. In fact, the total outstanding balance of student loan debt currently is $1.56 trillion. But what about the average borrower? In this video, we are going to be covering what that monthly student loan payment looks like for the average borrower and what you can do to take control of your student loan debt. Hey guys, welcome back to The College Investor, the place for personal finance and investing for millennials. Now, student loan debt has gotten absolutely crazy lately. And I know because I graduated with $35,000 in student loan debt and I know what that burden feels like. It's absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and hop into what those current statistics look like for student loan borrowers. Currently, the average student loan debt is $33,500, so that's not far off from what I graduated with and what probably many of you are graduating with if you have taken out student loans. The median student loan debt is $17,000 and the average monthly payment is $393. Take a look at the median monthly payment amount though, that's $222. And then the percentage of borrowers with growing loan balances is 47.5%. That means that nearly half of borrowers aren't seeing their balances go down. Then the percentage of borrowers who are more than 90 days delinquent is 4.67%. And if you are more than 90 days delinquent on your student loan payment, that information is passed on to the three major credit bureaus, which can dramatically impact your credit score. So the important thing here to remember is don't ignore your student loan payment. It's not going to go away if you don't pay it, so make sure you have a plan in place. Speaking of plans, first, if you have federal student loans, then there are several options that are provided to you in a couple of different forms of repayment plans. Okay, so to go over these really quickly, there are four major types of repayment plans if you have federal student loans. Those include the standard, extended, graduated, and then income-driven repayment plans, and there's a couple of different sub-options with those. So let's go over each of these really quickly. The standard repayment plan is the most popular. In fact, it's most likely going to be what you default into if you don't pick another option for repaying back your student loans. So this is going to be a 10 year repayment plan. And this is typically for people who make more than what they owe. So if you make $40,000 salary in your job and you owe $25,000 in student loan debt, it's very likely you can succeed on the standard repayment plan. The extended repayment plan is basically going to consolidate all of your federal student loans. So if you took out loans every year of college, they're going to lump that together and then you'll be on an extended repayment period. Sometimes that's 10 to 30 years that you'll be paying off your student loan debt. What this means is as your repayment period extends, so does the amount of interest that you pay. You may have a smaller monthly payment, but you're going to be putting more of that money towards interest. This is typically for borrowers who owe one to one and a half times more than their annual earnings. The next one is the gr graduated repayment plan. So this is a 10 year repayment plan. However, your monthly minimum payments are going to start smaller and then they're going to increase over time. And what this means is in the beginning, most of your payment is going to go towards interest and then as your monthly minimum payment amount increases then more will go towards the principal later on in that repayment period so in the beginning it's going to seem like progress is extremely low because majority of that monthly minimum payment is going to go towards the interest in the beginning so this can make it a little difficult to be on this plan because it's not very motivating this one is for borrowers who can't afford payments right now. So if you feel like you have a smaller salary and you can't afford the minimum payment on the standard plan, then you might wanna consider the graduated repayment plan. 
The next repayment plan is the income driven repayment plan. There are actually four different options inside of this option, which includes the revised pay as you earn, income based repayment, pay as you earn, and income contingent repayment. Now I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of each of these options, but basically in a nutshell, they're going to take a percentage of your income and use that amount, typically around 10%. They're going to use that amount as your monthly minimum payment amount for your student loan debt. And also your repayment terms are going to be longer than 10 years, sometimes 20, 25 years, 30 years. So you're going to be paying more in interest if you get on one of these plans. Now, if you're still confused as to what option you should be selecting when it comes to paying back your student loans, you can check out what options you have with your current student loan servicer, or you can use a tool like Loan Buddy. Loan Buddy is awesome at helping you figure out what your options are based on your own situation. Then you can also look at refinancing marketplaces like Credible or Lending Tree to help you figure out if refinancing is an option. We will link to all of those things below, so be sure to check them out. You know, a lot of these repayment plans uh, just extend the life of the loan. So you're paying, you may be paying a smaller monthly minimum payment, but you're just dragging it out further than what it really needs to be. If you can do so, I highly suggest DIYing your student loan debt payoff by paying more than the minimum payment each month. You can primarily do the, this one of two ways. You can either start with the smallest loan balance that you have and make all of your extra payment towards that smallest loan and then once that's paid off, you can move on to the next smallest loan debt balance and that's typically called the debt snowball. You could work it backwards and do the highest interest rate and pick the loan that has the highest interest rate and then pay that one off first and then work your way down to the smallest interest rate. That's typically called the debt avalanche. Couple that with building a budget knowing exactly what income is coming in and what money is going out is going to help you determine how much money you can put towards your student loan debt payment in that month. This by far was the best way that I used on how I paid off my $35,000 in student loan debt was simply budgeting and understanding where my money was going each month. Then you can also look for ways to earn extra income, whether that be a side hustle, selling things, or just boosting your salary. If you feel like you've hit a ceiling with your current employer and you can't earn more money, look for another job. Look for a company that's going to pay you more and don't be afraid to negotiate that. We have plenty of tips and tricks on how to do that on thecollegeinvestor.com. So be sure to check out those options. Now, your repayment plan is really up to you and your own financial situation. Not one option is going to work for everyone, so be sure you do your research. If you wanna learn more about just the ins and outs of how student loans work and what your options might be for paying off those student loans, be sure to check out more information on thecollegeinvestor.com.